Hey everyone, Tim Schofield here from KibbyKing77.com here with a check-in video in the iPhone 6S Plus Challenge. This is my last video before my final review, which will actually come this weekend, so make sure you're subscribed. Also, a huge shout-out to Slick Wraps. They uh, made this series possible, so check them out. I'll link to them in the description. Anyways, in this check-in, I'm going to talk about the camera, battery life, a couple other things as well, so let's get to it. Okay, jumping right into it, let's get into the camera. So here's the software right here, take a quick picture. The shutter speed's very quick, opening the camera is very quick, and the interface is pretty easy, so you can just kind of swipe down to switch between the different modes. You'll see video, you have slow-mo and time-lapse as well. And then when we go to photo on the left here, you can switch to the front-facing camera, take a timer. Right here is live photos and then HDR mode and flash. Up in the upper right-hand corner, you have some filters as well. I'm not one to use filters at all. Now let's talk about live photos. So essentially what it is, if I took a picture of let's say my hand and you'll see I'm moving my fingers, what it's gonna do is it's gonna capture a little bit of it, the audio and video along with that picture I took. Now to show you that, here is that picture. You use 3D touch and push in and you'll see it kind of shows a little gif of basically what happened with audio. Now to me, I honestly don't really see a point of live photos. It's a little extra space, probably about double the amount of a normal picture, so I pretty much never have it on. Now let's go down to video, and here's an example. In my last video, I talked about how there's no quick shortcut to settings, and this is a perfect example of why it's so cumbersome. You'll see you have 60 frames per second. You could switch to 30 frames per second, but if you wanna do that on the fly, or if you wanna switch to 4K on the fly, you have to back out of the specific app, go into settings, Go ahead and scroll down and find the actual photos and camera settings. And in here is actually where you see those settings. If you want the grid, here's the video recording. Like I said, you could switch to 4K, to 30 frames per second or 720p. It's honestly really uh, cumbersome and annoying. When it comes to the pictures that 12 megapixel camera takes, it is top three out there. It takes very good pictures, no matter what lighting situation you're in. It does a good job at focusing as well. I do prefer the Note 5 and S6, S6 Edge, S6 Edge Plus camera over it, but it's still a really fantastic camera. When it comes to recording video, I, here's a video I recorded in 1080p, 60 frames per second. The optical image stabilization helps a lot. So if you have a 6S, not a 6S Plus, you might struggle with video recording, but on the 6S Plus, video recording is very, very good. On the last iPhone challenge I did, I actually didn't use iMessage, but I decided to use it this time, and I have been thoroughly impressed. Now, a couple options you'll see it lets you know when someone reads your message you can turn that on and off or not and then you'll also notice that three dots that were there actually that let me know that he was typing um, you'll see I'm just gonna send him a random message and it'll say probably pretty soon that he read it and then he's typing now with iMessage you are sending it over the data network so Wi-Fi LTE, et cetera, as opposed to the cell network, the bubbles turn blue when using iMessage. Now they're green when sending it over the cell network, which gives you an option to do so if it fails over your data network. Now you don't have to use iMessage if you have the device if you don't want to. You have send red receipts and send as SMS if it fails over iMessage. Now that being said, I can't really show you the best part about it. And honestly, the best part about it is that you can use any cross compatible device such as an iPad or a MacBook. Now I don't have either of those, so I can't really test it, but I really wish my phone would have that and this is one of the biggest features of iMessage. Now when it comes to the embedded battery on the iPhone 6s plus it essentially gets me through the day every single day I'm not worried about having to charge it middle of the day but when it comes to charging it could be a little bit faster actually the quick charge on other Android devices is much faster. Now that being said standby time on this device is very good a couple times I fell asleep with forgetting to charge it and woke up with maybe a couple two three percentage less than when I did when I went to sleep. All in all, when it comes to battery life, this is definitely one of the best out there. A lot of people have been asking if I do miss the back button, and honestly, I do still miss it. They've done a good job at implementing a back swipe gesture. However, with 3D Touch, occasionally, if I press in too hard, it will actually uh, switch to that app switcher on accident as opposed to going back. And it's better because a lot of developers have actually implemented it into their apps as well. Now, there are a couple apps that don't have that back swipe gesture implemented, and it gets a little cumbersome. You can always double tap to get to bring the screen down to press that back button though. All right, so that is my final check-in video. Full review coming this weekend, so make sure you click that subscribe button. Also, check out my other two-week challenge videos, my previous ones. If you haven't checked them out, I'll link to the playlist in the description of the video. But anyways, thank you guys for watching. I really appreciate it. You can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Google+, all links in the description of the video below. As always, guys, thank you very much for watching.